get deeper into the U.S. response and bring in retired U.S. Army four-star general, General Wesley Clark. General, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Hannah. Like Robert just mentioned, the Biden administration is saying this is going to be a multi-tiered operation. This is just the beginning. How much longer can we expect this to go, sir? Well, I think you're in the phase of this operation where today we're doing a battle damage assessment of what the strikes actually did in terms of, of taking out uh, particular aim points. Um, there were 85 aim points. Uh, they'll all be looked at. People will uh, be analyzing, did the bomb actually do what it was intended to do? Do we have to go back and restrike again? At the same time, we'll be listening and, uh, and, and getting all of the intelligence we can on what the reaction of these terrorist groups will be. So I think if you see a strong reaction by the terrorist groups, if they attempt to follow through on their threats, I think you'll see a repeat of these strikes, maybe even more intensely. I'm glad you mentioned that because the scope of these attacks with 85 targets, seven facilities, what was the goal here, sir? And what is the real measure of success for these strikes? Well, that's the right question to ask. And so uh, you, you can label it as retaliation, but it's not actually retaliation. Retaliation is a tit for tat. Uh, you hit me, I'll hit you. I'll, you hit me, I'll hit you, and on and on and it goes. And these strikes should have been heavy enough to dissuade the militia groups and Iran from continuing their policy of these uh, pinpoint strikes on American uh, installations in the region. Now, that is the measure of success. Will they stop the attacks? Or are they going to come back and, and escalate? You can expect a lot of uh, rhetoric, but will they actually follow through? Because the United States is, uh, is, in a way, putting its foot down at this point. The administration has also said they have no interest in hitting Iran here or attacking the inside of Iran. So is it possible to deter Iran from these continued attacks around the region? Well, that's the question. And, uh, and many of us believe that uh, you should have, we should have struck, struck inside Iran at least one target to show the Iranians they're not uh, exempt from this. All these terrorist groups, they're all funded, they're organized. In many cases, they have uh, IRGC technicians there that are preparing the drones and the other missiles to be shot. So, you know, Iran can claim ignorance of this, say, oh, these are just, uh, you know, people that uh, they just uh, don't like the United States. But that's not actually the case. These people are motivated, organized, supported by Iran. When Iran wants to turn off this policy, it'll turn off. General, I want to go back to something you just said, that we should have struck Iran. If you can dive in deeper on why you think that is. I think to really stop this, you have to hit assets that are uh, really significant to the Iranians. And, you know, this has been going on, these strikes, for years. These uh, terrorist groups in Iraq and Syria have built up their locations. We gave them four or five days notice they were going to be struck, maybe not directly to them, but, but they got the idea. So the question is, can you take out all that capacity so that Iran could say, oh, keep striking, but they don't have the capacity to do so? Uh, that's difficult to do. It's much better if Iran simply says, look, uh, we, we, we've gone far enough with this. Let's change our policy. And that's really what the goal of this uh, strike should be. We should have Iran back off. Let's get the conflict in Gaza settled. Let's get it settled the right way and then put a new structure in place in the Middle East to end all this fighting. But that requires that Iran has to back off its quest for regional hegemony. I do want to talk to you about those long-range B-1 bombers that they used instead of any weapons from the U.S. Navy or weapons that they already had on the ground in Qatar. Is there a reason for that? I think the B-1 is the, is the right platform to use in a strike like this. They came in at night. Um, the air defenses were shut down either electronically or by strikes earlier. Some of what the Israelis did in around Damascus probably contributed to the ability to penetrate that airspace without difficulty. These um, B-1 bombers can carry a number of bombs. They're precision guided by GPS, uh, joint direct attack munitions. So uh, they can fly over the target and pop, 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 drop five or six bombs at different aim points and expect them to strike within a few feet of the designated mean point of impact. 
So that's the reason you would use a B-1 bomber. If it's safe to penetrate, it's much better going at a strike like this than bringing in F-16s or, or F-15s or F-35s. Thank you for that context, sir. We've also seen so many attacks on the Red Sea when it comes to cargo ships. Do you think we'll see an escalation after the attacks last night? So I think, you know, with the respect to the Houthis, I think we have to be careful how we think about this. We're not trying to invade Yemen and kick the Houthis out. Uh, that, that, that is not a mission the United States should undertake. But we should deny them the capacity to conduct these strikes. So that means putting uh, assets overhead, watching them as they move around, continuing to strike at assets that are vulnerable, that look like they're about to be used, uh, so that uh, we don't have to use our uh, close-in defense to protect the shipping. Instead, uh, we can preempt their ability to strike the shipping. That's clearly the goal. It may be beyond the reach of U.S. capacity in the region right now, but I'm sure we will build up to that. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.